Hello, everyone. I'm Tommy Lahren, along with Anita Vogel, Jason Chaffetz, and Raymond Arroyo. And welcome to the big weekend show, The Big Story Tonight. Trump loving truckers unite. Truck drivers now are refusing to take deliveries into New York City in protest of the more than $350 million civil fraud ruling against former President Donald Trump. And the boycott starts tomorrow. They're going to start refusing loads in New York City starting on Monday. I got about three drivers that I drive with. They already vibrated the boss and told them they ain't going to New York City. So I, I don't know uh, how far across the country this is or how many truckers are going to start denying loads to go going to New York City. But <laughs> I'll tell you what. Around and find out. Interesting timing that this op-ed came out in the New York Times today. The columnist is trying to paint Trump supporters as violent and, quote, warping American politics. How original. But Republicans say it's Democrats who are becoming radicalized, all because they don't want Trump to win again. Democrats have become radicalized and they have decided that partisan politics matters more than the rule of law. What this is about this is about power and trying to destroy Donald Trump. Why? Because ultimately this is about attacking democracy. They want to stop the voters from voting for Donald Trump. But there was a big win for Trump this weekend, hours after he launched his new sneaker line in a surprise visit to SneakerCon in Philadelphia. The goal never surrender high tops officially sold out no word yet on if the limited supply of three hundred and ninety nine dollar kicks will be restocked Jason you're a fashionable guy uh, oh, yeah. will you be getting yourself some Trump sneakers bright gold so you can blend in not at the that streets? price holy cow you can get them in POTUS white or T red um, they, they are definitely a collectible item you know what drives uh, the Democrats nuts Donald Trump does so well with blue-collar workers that, those truckers that are saying, hey, we're not going to deliver to New York City, that's the heart and soul of the Trump movement. And Democrats can't stand it. They don't understand it. Mm -hmm. They don't like it. But they try to fight back with these stupid op-eds that make no sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, uh, Raymond, warping American politics, mega bad. You know, Dark Brandon has told us that time and time again, mega bad. But do you think this is actually pushing Trump supporters to be more enthusiastic in their support when they're constantly called deplorable, mega, radicalized, you name it? David French's piece in the New York Times, frankly, is a little cuckoo. I mean, he talks about these mega threats and how it's unraveling society. I've got a couple of people I'd like David French to talk to. Uh, John Justice Kavanaugh, Amy Coney Barrett, and pro-lifers who had their clinics firebombed in the last year. I mean, this is completely unhinged. Look, there's a lot of violence happening in America, but to try to somehow throw all of that at Donald Trump's feet, even with those gold high tops, I think this is a bridge too far. But look, every time they try to say Trump, they try to stop him at a trial, or they try to throw all of this uh, you know, sludge at him, he somehow survives, which must drive his opponents crazy, because even the sneaker thing, I was on social media last night. Very interesting, as you see black support eroding from Joe Biden. This is connecting with black America because they love sneakers, they're into sneakers. They love the, you know, th this is a big deal, certainly in, in the inner city. So when you have Trump roll out his sneaker line, they're like, wait a minute, this is cool. He's reaching them on a level that defies and is above politics. The culture always trumps politics. And Trump understands culture like no politician I've ever seen. Question for you on that point, though. Yeah. Will the people that are excited about the sneakers and excited about Donald Trump Will that translate into them going out and voting for Donald Trump? Well, anybody willing to put 400 bucks down for a pair of sneakers? Yeah, I think that's commitment and love. I it's hope something. You're right. It's something. It's affection on, on some level. I, I don't think this is just for collectors. It's for people who want Donald Trump brand sneakers. That. Again, he's connecting on a different level. And, and, uh, that I hope he brings new voters into the fold, though, because I have a feeling the people that are going to go buy the $400 sneakers were probably going to vote for Trump anyway. So that's my concern. How, oh, yeah, well. how does he get new voters into the fold 
that's my concern. But mm. I want to move now, of course, to the ruling against him. Turns out one of our favorite sharks, Kevin O'Leary, is talking about why this Trump ruling is an assault to real estate here in New York. Let's take a listen, and then, Anita, I want to get your take on our favorite shark. This case really isn't just about Donald Trump. This is an assault on the 11th sector of the S&P 500, which is real estate. So if you're a developer, you're, the, you're an entrepreneur, you go to a bank, and you say, look, I want to borrow $200 million to build a building. And they say, well, what, can, what assets do you have we can secure this loan against? And you point to a building you built before. Why would you take the risk to put up this much money and have a judge arbitrarily decide that you are in some form of breach of fraud? Each of us as investors, we vote with our capital. I say go to Florida, go to Texas, go to North Dakota, Oklahoma, West Virginia. These are winner states. Mm -hmm. Winner states, indeed. Let's hope we can win some states. But, Anita, what do you think? Does this actually bode well for places like Florida, as Kevin O'Leary said? Are these businesses going to look at this and say, hey, maybe it's time to go to a free state? Yeah, well, I remember posing this question to Jason yesterday, whether this ruling would have sort of a chilling effect on other developers and financiers. Because, look, Donald Trump certainly isn't the first person to use these tactics mm -hmm. to right. get better loan rates and, you know, more favorable conditions. Um, so, you know, yeah, I think people are going to look at other places. Why wouldn't they? But I I want to go back to the uh, to the New York Times calling these truckers violent. They're they're basically staging a boycott. So I you know I just want to call out the New York Times. There we've seen plenty of protests in the last six months here. Pro Palestinian protests, shutting down major train stations in this city, uh, shutting down entrances to universities where Jewish students and other students uh, are trying to enter, intimidating people. Where was the New York Times calling out those protesters as being violent? In an entire summer of BLM, we actually have that quote that both of you alluded to, yeah. and it is quote the tsunami of mega threats is different. The intimidation is systemic and ubiquitous and acknowledged tactic in the playbook of the Trump right that flows all the way down from the violent fantasies of Donald Trump himself. That's that is so fundamentally totally wrong. Look, Democrats' playbook is let's go scorched earth. Make people afraid to wear a MAGA hat. Make them afraid to wave the flag. Make them afraid of Donald Trump. That's their tactic. When you don't own the issues and you can't win on inflation, the border, overseas, the, the inflation, all that, go scorched earth on your opponent. But it's not going to work this time because we had four years of Donald Trump and it was pretty darn good in this country. The country pretty was peaceful. safe. We weren't going to war. We weren't doing those types of things. <laughs> Yeah. We should make one more point about that trial and the ruling of this, this judge in New York that's so important. $450 million is what Trump will have to put into escrow just to appeal the case. And the ruling by the judge, no New York bank can loan him the money. This is torturing a candidate, and it's hard to not see this as election interference. I just wanted to get that in. Got to sell a whole lot of sneakers. You bet. Uh, but speaking of that election, uh, tonight, Nikki Haley is <laughs> refusing to say if she'll support Trump if he's the Republican nominee, but it doesn't really seem like Trump cares. He only mentioned her two times in his rally last night in Michigan. Fox News correspondent Alex Hoff is in South Carolina tonight. Well, good evening to you. Former Governor Haley, she is kicking off her bus tour tonight. She'll be crisscrossing the state, hoping for at least a competitive showing in Saturday's open primary. She also sat down tonight for a town hall with Fox News' John Roberts, slamming Trump's statement where he said that Russia should, quote, do whatever the hell they want to NATO members who don't spend enough on defense, and his lack of comment on the death of Putin foe Alexei Navalny. If Putin's mouth is open, he is lying. And we need to be aware of that. And I think that's why it was so damaging when Trump said that he would choose Putin and actually encourage Putin to invade NATO allies instead of standing with our allies that stood with us at 9-11. At a rally in Michigan last night, Trump spent a bulk of his time condemning the legal cases against him, speaking little of South Carolina or Haley. You know, Nikki Haley, have you ever heard of her? You don't hear her name too much anymore. So would Haley back Trump in the general? Well, she indicated in the past that she would, but earlier today declined to confirm. I don't think he's the right person at the right time. I don't think he should be president. The last thing on my mind is who I'm going to support. The only thing on my mind is how we're going to win this. Now, Haley was asked tonight if she were to be elected president and if former President Donald Trump was to be convicted of a crime, would she pardon him? She said tonight that she would. Tommy.
Oh, very, very interesting. Uh, Anita, I want to go to you on this one. The, the Nikki Haley town hall. Is she bringing new voters into her fold, or is this kind of, as Jason put it earlier, maybe her farewell tour? Well, she mentioned she sold 20,000 T-shirts at the town hall. <laughs> uh, if we compare that to How Trump's, many did she yeah, buy herself? I, I don't know, but, um, you know, you compare that to Trump's sneaker, it's not, it's not going so well. But that was the piece of news at the very end there that Alex Hoff reported that came out of this, I think, is that she said she would pardon Donald Trump if he were to be convicted. Uh, that, that's at least one new piece of news that, that I saw that came out of this. Mm. But, uh, Jason, she says that she has not fully committed, or she refuses to say, if she would vote for Donald Trump if he's the nominee, um, unless something drastic happens, he's going to be the nominee. But do you think that's interesting that she's playing that game now? Uh, uh, shame on Nikki Haley for not unilaterally saying she would support the Republican nominee. That was the whole, you know, the, come on, who are you going to support? Joe Biden? You're down to a two-person race. First of all, this is her last gasp. I think it is the farewell tour. If you can't win your home state, it's time to get out. But you have got to support the nominee. She would want it in reverse. If she beat Donald Trump, she'd want all those Trump people. You can't have it. You've got to have it so that, you know, Come on, it's equal, it's balanced. When you watched the Nikki Haley mm. town hall, were you rejuvenated, inspired, <laughs> Raymond? I was as inspired as I think the people watching at home. Uh, I'll leave it to them to decide what their reaction was, but I'll say this, she's selling a permanently banned t-shirt Watching this, GOP voters are permanently banning Nikki Haley from their political future. She's digging herself a hole here, throwing herself out of the party, and the cascading pinched hand gestures and that lockjaw approach, just on a cultural note, I don't see how that wins anyone over or people listening to her for the first time. Well, she has ammunition in her heels, as she has once said. Mm. Um, but if you missed it, <laughs> you can watch that town hall with Nikki Haley, moderated by John Roberts, tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern. And coming up Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern, the Ingram Angle exclusive town hall with Donald Trump. Raymond, I think that you might be there. I will be. But coming up on this jam-packed hour of the big weekend show. He has no main character energy at all. Time to go for Sleepy Joe. More Democrats want Biden off the 2024 ticket. Plus, this great <laughs> Saint Cecilia, mother of all. Ooh, new details about the funeral uh, at the iconic St. Patrick's, Patrick's Cathedral that has the Catholic Church and a couple of our panelists outraged tonight and later addicted to love or swiping the claim that may have dating apps heading to court. Welcome back to the big weekend show. A confused commander-in-chief, President Biden seems to mix up Ukraine and NATO. As the outrage builds for Biden's slow response to how the administration will punish Putin for Alexei Navalny's death. Fox News correspondent Lucas Tomlinson is in Rehoboth Beach tonight with the president. Anita, some critics of President Biden say it's pretty rich that he wants congressmen to return to Washington while he's here on vacation in Rehoboth Beach and departs for L.A. in a few days for the second time this month for more fundraisers. So the idea that we're going to walk away from Ukraine, the idea that we're going to let NATO begin to split is totally against the interests of the United States of America. So it's about time we make sure that Congress come home and pass the legislation funding NATO. And one Democratic lawmaker appeared to blame former President Trump for the death of Putin's fiercest critic, Alexei Navalny. We had former President Donald Trump essentially say that Russia should attack European countries. That is crazy. That is traitorous language. Russia certainly was listening, and I think they thought, hey, we now have a green light to do all sorts of crazy stuff. And if Trump would be president, Putin would have even more latitude. On Fox News Sunday, Democratic Senator Michael Bennett says Congress must send more weapons to Ukraine to defend itself. The most significant thing we could do right now to push back on this is to continue to fund Ukraine, to push back on the illegal invasion that Putin has led, the first uh, incursion into a free country in Europe since the World War II order, since the, since the new order. I think they shouldn't pass it individually, I, but if it comes over as individual, of course I'll vote to support it. The Republican chairman of the House Intelligence Committee said today he's confident that Ukraine aid will pass through Congress. Anita? 
All right, Lucas Tomlinson, thank you for that report. Also tonight, some Democrats seem to be turning on Biden, including squad member Rashida Tlaib, who is urging voters in Michigan not to vote for the president in the upcoming primary. Listen. This is the way you can raise our voices. Don't make us even more invisible. Right now, we feel completely neglected, neglected and just unseen by our government. If you want us to be louder, then come here and vote uncommitted. And radio host Charlemagne the God is piling on. He says Biden doesn't have main character energy. Well, he's, he's just an uninspiring candidate. Like, you know, there's nothing about, you know, Joe Biden that makes you want to listen to him. He, he has no main character energy. I don't think it has anything to do with, 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 with age. You know, I think it has just everything to do with, with him. <laughs> Okay, and uh, remember, folks, Charlemagne the God was the radio host that Biden accused of not being black uh, if he had questions about voting for either Biden or Trump. Uh, so now I guess he's maybe uh, giving a comeback here. Uh, but Jason, let me ask you about this. So we have Rashida Tlaib saying, don't vote for Biden. Okay, but who's left to vote for if they're not voting for Biden? You got uh, Minnesota Congressman Dean Phillips, author Marianne Williamson, and RFK Jr., who's, you know, running as an independent, but really is a Democrat. I mean, who else are they supposed to vote for? Well, first of all, Charlemagne the God is right spot on when he talks about Slow Joe, because he is not inspiring to anybody on any level, to, and certainly not not within the communities that he's talking about. Um, and go ahead, uh, Michigan, don't vote for whoever, you know, show up and vote present. It, you, that's not going to do anything. I think Republicans are going to do quite well in Michigan. Uh, there's a reason why Donald Trump was there yesterday. Um, it's a state that he can win. Republicans can win, um, particularly when you talk about the auto industry and electric vehicles, which I know we're going to talk about later yeah. in the show. Those other issues are going to drive people, I think, in Michigan to the Republican side of the aisle. Very close in the vote last time. But Democrats are in trouble in Michigan because of all the dissent that they have within their own party. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting there. And Tommy, let me ask you about these comments from Charlemagne the God. Uh, you, you know, you're certainly representing the younger generation at this table. They want an inspirational leader. So if they're not going to vote for Biden, I mean, what are they going to do? Who do they check the box for? Well, I maintain that Joe Biden is not going to be the nominee, so I don't think that they're going to be faced with that decision. But Charlemagne is exactly right. He doesn't have main character energy. He doesn't have energy, period. So I think that there's a lot of young Democrats out there or young liberals out there that don't know exactly what they should do. So they're going to turn to TikTok and the paid army of TikTok influencers that say Joe is a great guy. But here's the problem I have. They don't like Joe Biden, but... The policies that Joe Biden is puppeting, unfortunately, a lot of them do like. Free everything, mm -hmm. free education, you get your student loan forgiveness, free Palestine, electric vehicles, trans everything. Unfortunately, the agenda of the Democrat Party is appealing to young people because they spend their time on TikTok. That's my concern. Republicans have to do a better job. It's not enough just to say Joe's old because if Joe's not the nominee, we're going to be in a bad spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Raymond, I want to read something from the Wall Street Journal, and then I'd like to have you react. Take a look at this headline. For President Biden, nothing beats a weekend in Delaware. Uh, Biden has traveled to his home state nearly half of the weekends of his presidency, spending all or part of 254 days there during his first three years in office. Overall, Biden has spent more time outside of the White House on unofficial or semi-official travel than any other president since George W. Bush. You know, yesterday, we we talked about East Palestine, Ohio, and how he couldn't find the time to go, oh, well. but he could have picked one of those beach weekends, Vacationing right? Vacationing takes a lot of time, Anita. Have some sympathy for the man. He's working hard. He's got to read those note cards and follow the little blue dots to see where to stand. This is a tough gig. Look, that's the reason Joe Biden's support is eroding. Black America's turning on him. Arab Americans are turning on him. You see the poll numbers. And Rashida Tlaib, we should mention this for one second, she represents really an uprising on the left. Every time Joe Biden opens his mouth, there's a, a protest group of Palestinians uh, protesting his speech. They are there. This is a part of the left's coalition that's crumbling. But Rashida Tlaib, she's not saying vote for somebody else. She's saying vote uncommitted. That's what she did last week when Congress went ahead and condemned rape and using sexual abuse and torture against well, Hamas doing that. They were condemning them. 
Tlaib voted present. Mm. This is radical, the radical beliefs, and I think it's eroding not only confidence in the president, but his own coalition. Yeah. All right. Well, we're watching it. Okay. Coming up next, is it time for a tune-up? There are signs Biden <laughs> is pumping the brakes on his green dream. But why is that? We'll talk about it coming up next. We're back with a Fox News alert. Two police officers and a paramedic killed in the line of duty in a suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Rose Schmidt from our Fox affiliate in Minneapolis is live at the police and fire department headquarters in Burnsville. Rose. Good evening, Raymond. A flag is flying here uh, in front of the Burnsville Police and Fire Departments tonight as this city mourns the loss of three members of its public safety community. A vigil is also expected to start here any moment now. Burnsville Police say this all started around 2 a.m. today when they were called to a home for reports of an armed man barricaded inside with family members. Police say the situation escalated into gunfire and two police officers and a firefighter paramedic were shot and killed by the gunman. Another officer was also shot but is expected to survive. The gunman, gunman meanwhile, was reported dead in the home around 8 a.m. State officials say it's unclear whether he was shot by police or took his own life. We later learned seven children ranging in age from 2 to 15 were in the home and witnessed the incident. Luckily, none of them were injured. Here's Burnsville city leaders during a fire, uh, press conference today. This is a hard day. It's a really hard day for our public safety family. We're hurting. Okay, we're hurting. Today, three members of our team made the ultimate sacrifice for this community. They are heroes. State, offic State officials also saying the gunmen um, had large amounts of ammunition and several guns. Reporting live in Burnsville, Minnesota, Rose Schmidt, Fox News. Thank you, Rose, and God bless those families uh, of all those slain in, the, in duty. And we're seeing a pattern of this all across the country. Our, our, the people who ensure our safety killed in the line of duty. Thank you, Rose. The Biden administration is throwing their electric vehicle mandate into reverse due to election year pressures. Remember when this was Team Biden's favorite tune? First crack at the new and different jobs for electric vehicle this sucker's quick. How does, How's it drive? The future is electric, moving toward it at lightning speed. Thousands of union workers here and across the country are building the vehicles of the future, the batteries that will power them, and the chargers that will support them. Not so fast, Mayor Pete. Under pressure from the United Auto Workers Union, who withheld their endorsement of Biden until he caved on this, the Biden administration is set to slow their electric car mandate for manufacturers. The New York Times reporting the change comes as President Biden faces intense crosswinds as he runs for reelection. While trying to confront climate change, he's aiming to cut carbon dioxide emissions from gasoline powered vehicles. At the same time, Mr. Biden needs cooperation from the auto industry and political support from unionized auto workers. Now, Jason, even with all the tax incentives, sales of electric vehicles are down 10 percent even in California, how is it possible to mandate that 67% of all cars sold in the U.S. will be electric vehicles by 2030? How is it possible? It, it, it's not possible, Raymond. I mean, the, the, the mandates are just untenable. There's no possible way you can get there. You don't have the infrastructure in this country. Now, remember, Biden pushed the so-called American Rescue Plan, right. which had $350 billion run by who? One of the brother of one of the biggest <laughs> lobbyists, Mr. Podesta, there in Washington, D.C. Who knows where that funny money's going and what they're doing. But to build out the infrastructure. Oh, and by the way, it's cold outside and those batteries don't work so yeah. so well. So, yeah. you know, there's that. Which people are learning. And look, they, they say they have currently 172,000 charging stations. They need 2 million right. to, to, to reach demand. Tommy, the Biden administration has already spent $8 billion of our dollars 
at last count on electric city buses to replace the current fleet. There's only one little problem. In Kansas, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania, the buses have burst into flames, or they simply don't work. Philly shelved most of their electric fleet, and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration issued a recall. Why is Biden so committed to spending funds on these vehicles that don't work and that nobody wants, apparently? The big green lobby is alive and well, as Jason alluded to, so that's why you're seeing this. But people simply don't want electric vehicles. They don't want to ride on an electric bus. They don't want to drive an electric vehicle. They don't want to charge a vehicle. They don't want to worry in the middle of a snowstorm if they're yeah. going to be stuck somewhere. And let's also talk about rural America. What are you going to do if you come from a state like South Dakota and you want to get to the other side of South Dakota? You know how many charging stations we have in South Dakota? <laughs> can probably count them on this yeah. hand, my friend. Yeah. People don't want these vehicles. They're Corny, they're dorky, they don't work. Biden administration in a nutshell right there. Mm. Corny, dorky, doesn't work. I love that. Okay, part of the Biden backtrack, Anita, uh, is that Trump has been telling auto workers that all these EVs are going to eventually be made in China. Mm. He's courting them, even at his rallies. Here's one from last night. Watch this. We got your back. The auto workers are going to support this guy like we did in 16, 20, we're going to do it again in 24. Everybody's going to get out and vote. We're going to vote. 85 million of us are going to vote for this guy. They can't cheat enough to beat him. Anita, can Trump peel off these auto workers despite the Biden endorsement from their union? Well, first of all, if, if you can find a charging station, it takes a couple hours to charge the car. I just <laughs> yeah. want to say that. But sure, why not? I mean, these are this is base. These are the blue collar workers that he connects with. Of course they can. Just because the union uh, hierarchy puts out this endorsement, the, the workers can vote any way they want. Mm, yeah, so of we'll course. see what happens. You see the connections Donald Trump is making with black America, with, with uh, wor uh, the working Americans. We'll keep our eyes on this.